why do people think that, particularly in America, you, you get so many creationists? Why do you think they cling to the literal interpretation? Because there's so many different churches. There's so many, there's five or six different big brands of churches in America that they all have to have different opinions to make the sort of competition factor of it work. <laughs> so there has to be different views, otherwise it, they just merge as one. Yeah, and the Bible is open to interpretation because if you write something and don't say this is an absolute fact, then people will interpret it in different ways, which is why creationism has come about, because some people have taken the Bible literally to mean that God created Adam and Eve. Also, people think of it as a stronger point of view, so therefore people are more likely to take them seriously. So they cling to it, I guess. I think quite a lot of people are also scared of, if they attach themselves to a particular set of beliefs, they're going to be really frightened that these beliefs that they've believed throughout their lives are going to be wrong. So naturally, they're going to have to strengthen their authority to compete with any other religions, almost like a survivor of the fittest, and whoever has the most authority will survive and be the strongest. I think that might be the approach that many creationists take. I think as well they're scared that if they don't have something that's factual, factually true, that can't be disproven or can't be attempted to be disproven, then religion will die because they're scared that science is going to take over religion, you know, actual truth and proof is going to take over from people's beliefs. I think proof isn't necessarily right. In science, you've got empirical proof. Yeah. But in religion, you do have other types of proof. I mean, religious experiences or whatever. There are ways people attempt to prove it. It's just not the empirical evidence we take in today's society. It may be that they feel they're on stronger ground if they take a literal interpretation than if they try and read something else into it. If they say, literally, they could say, well, this is what the Bible literally says, rather than this is how we've interpreted it, maybe. Well, I think the way you need to interpret uh, Genesis and the Bible as a whole is how you take it. It needs to be your own personal thing to follow your own moral compass and use it to help you through your problems rather than having someone else dictate to you what it means. You need to have a personal view on that. I personally don't believe it's a literal interpretation, but I look at it as more a symbolical thing. So six days could be thousands of years, but at the time it was written, it needed to be simplified because they didn't have the span of thousands of years within the universe. They, they made it simpler so that everyone could understand it. Mm. You, you made that interesting point about different times needing a different kind of explanation. Yes, um, I sort of believe that back then it was more based on faith and society, faith was very important to them, whereas today it's less important and people look for proof, which is where science comes in. Do you think people today realise just how differently uh, we think these days, you know, we're so used to the idea of looking at things scientifically. It's very difficult for us to put us back, you know, 500, 1,000 years ago when they just didn't think that way. And do you think there's therefore um, a tendency for people today to think that they were stupid back then? Or did they have their own ways of getting at the truth, do you think? I don't think it's right to say that people might not have been thinking scientifically, because I think inquisitiveness is sort of natural to humanity, and that will have happened from, from the start, from, from day one. I think that's why people managed to find fire and create tools and stuff, and that is science in its own way. And religion is an attempt to try and, sort of in the infancy of mankind, to try and explain certain things in the world. We think it's special to be alive because we are, we're experiencing that. We have no experience of not being alive that we can remember. And I think that we're, we're going to want to make that special. We want to think that we're special because if we're not special, then what's the point? And I think that's the reason that a lot of people sort of go for the intelligent designer thing because Darwinism creates a sort of, it makes you feel really depressed if you think about it just being <laughs> a series of random chances. I don't think it's so much the difference between being alive and then an inanimate cell. I think it's more the fact that we have consciousness. We are mm. able to think for ourselves. We have altruism. And I think that's what sets us apart from not only cells, but from 
all the other animals in the community. Mm. That's just brain development, surely. It's just the stage your brain's developed to that it develops your consciousness, your ability to think different things apart from just like your base instincts. Well, I'm not a biologist, so I don't know, but I think that's something different. The fact that it's not just going beyond our basic needs, it's the fact that we can feel the kindness to help others that we don't know, those kind of different things that set humans out apart from animals. Surely that's like a product of evolution, like survival of the fittest. So we develop altruism because we know we'll survive better in our environment. I believe that evolution was provided by God in order to give us an explanation to satisfy our general human curiosity because there is a missing link and maybe that's where God got involved just to speed it up to where he wanted it to go. But, but what about all the, the suffering that goes on? Is, is that a problem for you? No, not really. Because mm -hmm. sometimes you have, to be su you have to suffer to become a better person. It's, it's wrong to say that it's suffering for, that some people die because it's, it's a fact of life. I think you've got to accept that people are, aren't, not everyone's going to make it till they're you know, 96 or whatever mm -hmm. because that's just how life works. And it's not necessarily cruelty that you have to get over because... Yes, it, it, it does seem cruel at the time, but you don't know that there's not a bigger picture behind it that you can't see that's going to make everything work out. Sean, you said that, uh, <laughs> that science has nothing to say about morality. Um, how do you react to that possibility that there is survival value in uh, adopting uh, an attitude of do not kill, do not steal, do not commit adultery. I think when, when I said that, I was more thinking about kind of contemporary issues of morality rather than kind of basic morality. I wasn't thinking of it from that perspective. I was more thinking of sort of, if you had a child on its own in a room that never sees its mother, never sees another person, gets fed through a gap in the door, whether they're going to get a sense of God's morality, whether they're going to get an idea of God, to kind of to prove or disprove Calvin's idea that everyone has an idea about God, that has an idea of religion. And that's cruel, but it's a scientific way of proving whether or not we have an innate sense of religion. I was more thinking of that than sort of the instinct not to kill. Rachel, you said that our um, moral sense came from our parents. Where did the parents get it from? Their parents, I think it just... Come on, <laughs> <laughs> it just get, get back to the beginning. <laughs> Um, no, I think, well, like humans, we've got like a really complex society and we're brought up like knowing if we do certain things, we'll be like praised, we do certain things, we're punished. And so we do certain things just to like get on, like it's about survival of the fittest. And that's just gradually being like built into society like so much that people begin to think it's like an integral, God-given thing. But actually, I think it's just in our genes. I reckon that it's a social construct, so it's like designed by society because it's an advantage. However, religion adds a weight and authority to it. It's possible that if God doesn't exist, then it has to come from biology. Anyway, no matter, even if people do follow the religion, then morality would come from religion, but that does not necessarily mean that it was a God who originally input that yeah, morality into I'm humanity. I'm not questioning whether religions are true or not, I just say it adds an authority that I think in an increasingly secular society we will come to see whether sort of morality continues or whether it becomes a lesser issue. But isn't it true that as religion's been on the decline in Western society, crime is on the rise? You hear so many more cases about like people murdering each other. No, no reason for it, just they decided one day that the laws of society didn't apply to them and they were going to wake up and go into a school and shoot half the people there. You could argue that society is becoming less moral. I don't think that's because of religion. I think you could say it's because of population growth or like changes in the economy. There's lots of different reasons. And like take the Holocaust, that was like in a country that would consider itself Christian. So I don't think you can say religion's got a lot to do with how moral people are. 